So now, what I'm holding now is one of the oldest guitars that I own and uh, is one of the guitars I've had the longest, right? Um, I've had this guitar over, I'm thinking back, maybe 35 years or so. And um, I saw a picture, I saw a photograph of Sunhouse playing one of these and thought, man, this, this guy looks like he can sing. <laughs> and um, it's before I'd ever even heard his voice on record. And I started looking for one of these and, and you know, I was really blessed to find this old girl. I call it Bernice because that's my wife's name, right? So, um, but anyway, this guitar is about a 1934 National Steel guitar. And you can sort of tell that because somewhere around 34, they no longer joined the, the, the body no longer joined the neck at the 12th fret, went to the 14th fret, but it still had a slotted peg head. So it's kind of that transitional figure. If you look at a, a photograph of an album cover, um, Sun House in 1964 or 5, I believe, recorded uh, an album called Father of the Folk Blues. And he was playing a guitar that looks remarkably like this one. Um, I mentioned that those musicians who played in that era, they loved the idea of the resonator guitar, but they played it on whatever they had. A uh, uh, Stella guitar from Sears and Roebuck or um, a guitar that you ordered from um, Montgomery Ward might cost $3 or $5 or, heaven help us, $10. And that's what they played this music on. But in terms of a certain sound of the Delta, Sun House, Book of White, uh, and a number of others, there's like no substitute for having a resonator guitar. All right? So, how do we get there? Well, I mentioned an alternate tuning. If you pick up a banjo, it's usually not, well, it's tuned to an open G tuning, probably, right? The idea of if you picked up an instrument and didn't know how to tune it, you'd probably tune it to a chord. Well, an open chord allows you to have uh, the ability to go from the first chord or the one chord to the four chord to the five chord to the octave using just one finger. You can't do that in standard. Right? Standard is the ultimate compromise tuning that allows you to play the most versatility with the least amount of tuning. But if you're in the context of a juke joint, if you're in the context of playing music that people are dancing to, drinking to, fighting to, the idea of going to an open tuning makes a lot of sense. So we're going to go to open G tuning, which is kind of a country blues tuning. It's pretty easy. You think about your E string, your bass, is tuned down to a D. And you've got a D as a reference. Your A string comes down to a G. Your B string is left alone, and the high E string comes down to a D. So you end up with something like this. Right? Now that open G tuning allows you now, with one finger, to go. Ah. And it really opens up the sonic possibilities of the instrument. You could play something and make a mistake. Just kind of, you know, you're playing and... And as long as you strum, you're back on the one chord. It sort of allows you to, to, to um, do some things a little differently than you would do in standard, where you're always worried about where the root, the third, the fifth, the seventh, all those kind of things. Those things are kind of taken care of and you're in open tuning. You've got your, um, you've got your pentatonic scale there. I'm 
I'm sorry. It's there. And you've got um, also the ability to take a piece of glass, break off the neck, sand it down so that you don't cut yourself, or take a piece of brass, and not only can you use your fingers, but you can use the slide. But it's still blues. It's still got that one, four, five octave thing going, right? So, imagine you're on this plantation and you've got to be the jukebox. There's a, a difference between, say, playing some tune that's really about profound and deep lyrics, although there's some of that in the Delta, but or just providing dance music. is ideal for just kicking out sound. Right? But at the same time that you have this instrument and this style that is very percussive and very, very rhythmic, you've got some really cool possibilities of imagery in you know, the Delta, flat, uh, a place that is in some ways kind of unforgiving, and a population of black folks who are uh, sort of live unto themselves. They, they plant the cotton, they cultivate the cotton, they pick the cotton, it's seasonal, it's, it can be lonesome, it can be um, a place that's really peaceful and at the same time it can be a place of extreme violence and all of that stuff is kind of tied into the imagery of that music. So, I mentioned that the one part, the, the first uh, part of a song, the part you sing over, might be um, very unique in terms of of how you play it. So, for example, there is a, a guy who worked on a dockery plantation by the name of um, Charlie Patton. Very rough voice. Charlie Patton came out of the out of the Chapman family, uh, a whole group of musicians, um, uh, all headed by uh, a patriarch. I believe his name was our mentor Chapman. Um, don't quote me on that. But he had a bunch of sons, and these sons and daughters uh, formed a group, very influential group called the Mississippi Sheiks. They were the they were the central family in that in that group, and um, this family they played everything. They played guitars and fiddles and banjos and and basses and all that kind of stuff. Well, Charlie Patton was supposedly an illegitimate son of the elder Chapman. And he had a style that was all his own, very percussive, very aggressive. If you listen to some of Charlie Patton's recordings, it's even hard to understand his lyrics. He has this really gruff, like, ah, 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 you know. So he might take a, a tune called Moon Going Down and do something like this. Well, the moon going down, Lord, and it was done. That might be the way you would hear that tune, but then he might come back with another tune that was kind of like, oh, 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 o
And the next piece might be very similar, but the thing that's changing is the lick you sing over that one part. The four part becomes pretty generic. Coming down to the bar, catching that little pentatonic figure, and the five chord is seventh fret, fifth fret, and back into whatever the, the, the head of the piece is. So, what I'd like to do is sort of just touch on how to play some of those major figures. And we won't hit all of them, but let's say we'll talk about that piece that uh, we just did, that moon going down, the way it was interpreted by someone like Sunhouse or someone like Willie Brown. And then we'll see how you could swap that lick out for another lick and do a song like uh, Death Letter Blues and understand that as you... Again, go back to the idea of modular blues, how you can plug in or swap out those modules to, to create a credible Mississippi Delta sound. So um, we'll get started on the Delta blues. <laughs> 